Hello and welcome to our 1820s American House here at the Frontier Culture Museum. My name is Lucas, one of the interpreters here. And what you're seeing behind me is an original structure, like many of our other exhibits here at the museum. This one was originally built in the town of Timberville, which is about an hour north of us here in Stanton. Behind me, from this wall over to the southern end of the structure, is the original side, which was built in 1773. But like many of our other exhibits, this one had additions and renovations added on to it over time. So from this wall over to the northern end of the house, this side was added on by the grandson of the original owner around 1820. The Bowman family owned this house for about nine generations, and they are an excellent example of the story of German immigration to the United States. Here we are in the kitchen of our 1820s house. This room is on the original side of the house that was first built in 1773. And if you visit, you may notice that this side of the house has a very similar floor plan to the German house on the old world side of our museum. Behind me is our cooking hearth. The family would be spending a lot of time huddled around here preparing their meals. And this may have featured at some point a raised hearth, much like the German kitchen on the old world side of our museum. But now it has a more Anglo-American style open hearth concept. And this is indicative of the abundance of wood in the new world compared to their home country, as well as their desire to emulate Anglo-American style kitchens. Their diet is going to be more varied than it was in their home country as well. The addition of new world styles of crops such as corn, beans, and squash, as well as West African crops like dry chili peppers, okra, and black-eyed peas, will all combine together with their traditional German cuisine to form what we are used to as traditional Southern cooking. Here we are in the Stuba of our 1820s house. Now it's called the Stuba because German immigrants will often continue to use German naming conventions for the rooms of their homes in the New World. But in English, the word Stuba roughly means stove. So behind me is our iron stove, which will keep this room at a very comfortable and constant temperature for the family. But there is evidence that at one point earlier, there was an iron stove connected to this wall, which was fed with hot coals from the kitchen hearth through the wall. This room will serve many different functions for the family. One such function is that of a domestic workspace. There would be a lot of spinning and weaving going on in this room throughout the day. And to that end, we have tools like our spinning wheel, which we will use to demonstrate the pr wool processing, which we shear from the sheep that we raise here at the museum. This room will also serve as the family's main dining room. And we have a drop leaf table here, which can be folded out to better serve a larger family. But this can also function as a writing desk and an entertainment desk for things like playing cards or playing instruments. And if you saw the tour of our German house, you may recognize this instrument as a Scheitholz. This is a German style of zither instrument that will be brought to the New World along with the German immigrants. And it will have a lasting impact on early American folk music because it will later on be developed into the mountain dulcimer. Here we are in the Kammer of our 1820s house. And Kammer in English roughly means bedchamber. So this is the main bedchamber of the house. And it's very conveniently located next to the Stube, which you may remember features our jam stove for heat. So we can better access that heat through the wall using this small door, which we can open and close depending on our need. And the main bed also features a set of curtains, which will act much like a tent to also help trap heat inside the bed for the couple sleeping on it. This bedroom also features a German style trunk. This is the main storage solution for Germans and German Americans in the 18th century. But in the 19th century, this will be supplemented by more Anglo styles of storage solutions, such as the chest of drawers. Here we are in the hall of our 1820s house, and this was one of the additions made onto the house in 1820 by the grandson of the original owner. It is a much more Anglo-style addition to the original German floor plan of the house. But once this addition is made, this hall will serve as the new entrance to the house, as well as a separation between the private sphere of the home for the family and the public sphere of the home here in the parlor, which we'll see now. 
Here we are in the parlor of our 1820s home, and like the hall, this was part of the additions made on to the original side of the house in 1820. This room is going to serve as a formal entertainment space for the family and their guests, as well as a space to show off their nicest pieces of furniture, such as this federal style mantelpiece behind me. This shows influences from neoclassical architecture, such as these carved wooden columns, as well as some vernacular influences, such as these starbursts. All of this is coming together to show the cultural journey that this family and many other German-American families are going on, generation by generation, toward becoming American. I want to thank you for joining us here on our virtual tour of the 1820s house, and we hope to see you in person at the museum soon.